and we're back in welcome back to rate this clinic so i haven't been on in a couple of weeks making videos and the reason for that is because i've just returned from surgery with dr patrick mwamba in brussels in belgium so as many of you who listen to this channel may know i had a botch job four years ago in turkey pretty much well i had it in may so it's pretty much to say four years and a couple of months and um, i've always been looking to repair that since that time so four years have passed obviously covid happened so we weren't able to travel properly but now finally came the time where i was able to address the problems that came about as a result of that transplant and i hope that i finally got it fixed and i'm going to give you guys today kind of my overview of the surgery what the goals were and if you're in a similar situation to show you that there are approaches that you can take to fix your hair if needed so how did i find out about dr mwamba so in february this year i started to really think about what i could do with my situation because i didn't even know it was possible to fix a botch job i thought that once you lost hair from your donor it was over once you were over harvested i thought it was over and in many cases it is but in some cases it's not so i started to get curious i started to look around for hair transplant repair surgeries and doctors i found a couple in london but when i googled their names there was no evidence that they did that they had even any cases like there was one guy i found him in harley street his website looked really good he was saying all the right things but I couldn't find any patient reviews for this guy so I didn't go with him same for another guy in Harley Street couldn't find anything with him then I went on to the hair restoration network which is a forum where people can discuss hair transplants and the thing is with these forums a lot of them have vested interests because they're getting paid by the doctors they're getting paid by surgeons so sometimes when people give bad reviews they remove the reviews or they lock the reviews so they're, they're very biased and they shut down free speech but hair restoration is a bit different they do get they do get a kickback from surgeons for recommending them to people but they don't shut down patient reviews like i've seen a lot of reviews on there where patients have complained about surgeons who are recommended by them they don't shut them down they don't lock the thread they're quite fair so it's quite a, an open forum for people to talk and to share reviews so anyway, I went on there, I posted my story and one came, one name that kept on popping up was Dr. Mwamba. So there was actually Dr. Mwamba and Dr. Bisanga and they're both from Belgium, they're both in Brussels and they're actually friends. So those two names kept popping up. I kept looking around, looking around and then I sent an email to Dr. Mwamba and they replied quite quickly. Sent my photos over, told them about my situation and what my goals were. And they sent me back to their credit a really detailed and thorough plan explaining what we do if we went into surgery. So they basically, they broke it down into three stages. So they said, first, we're going to extract more hairs from your donor to fill in your hairline and to fill in the gaps in the corners of your hair. So they're just going to fill it in and make it look denser. Then as a second optional stage, we could remove a lot of the badly angled plugs but they did recommend against this because they said it's quite expensive and it's quite time consuming. So what Asli Tarjan did, they put in a lot of hairs that were facing the wrong way. When I grow my hair out, like the hairs look wild. So that was the second proposed stage to remove that. But they said that was optional. And then the third stage that they recommended, which I was really impressed about, was that they could replace the hairs in the donor with beard hairs. So sometimes you see this called fit farming, which I think is a Dr. Mwamba term. Sometimes it's just called donor restocking. But that was really exciting to me, the prospect that they could fix my donor without me having to do SMP and rely on SMP. So I've done SMP before and my donor still, anytime your donor grows out over a certain length, it looks bad. So I was really impressed with that response. And I went back and forth with the clinic, asking more questions, asking more questions. And then I arranged a consultation. Initially, it was a virtual con uh consultation but then i thought you know what let me go and see the man himself because i got questions to ask him and i want him to give me like proper analysis of my hair because he might tell me one thing on webcam but then when i go for surgery he'll tell me something different so i didn't want any surprises so i went and met him he analyzed my hair he told me the plan and i was really impressed so 
I decided I was going to go with him. So the surgery was booked for June 28th, 29th, which was just this past week. And um, I had a lot of anxiety going into it because once bitten, twice shy. So obviously I got burnt in Turkey and it was hard for me to to swallow the fact that if I got botched again, this time is really over. There's no coming back. So if I went and did a surgery again and my donor got mashed up or the hairs didn't grow in or something, it truly is over and I'm just going to have to shave my hair off and be done with it. So I had a lot of anxiety going with it. One day I'd be really excited. The next day I'd think, oh my God, what if it doesn't work? I'd be Googling to look for cases where repairs didn't work, where they did work. Like it was just quite a worrisome thing going into another surgery. And anybody who's had a botched transplant knows exactly what I'm talking about. But at the same time, it beats just sitting there bitter and worrying about your hair all the time. And worrying that people are looking at your hair and thinking that you're never going to have normal hair. So I thought it's worth it's worth me at least trying. So obviously the cost compared to Turkey is going to be much different. So Dr. Mwamba charges three euros plus 21 percent tax, which is mandatory in Belgium for any scalp hairs. And then on top of that, you've got beard hairs or body hairs, which are five euros plus 21 percent tax as well. So it all starts to pile up once you put together the plan. And they initially recommended 1,200 via email, 1,200 scalp hairs via email and then 500 to 1,000 beard hairs. So it's quite a significant cost. So I, I took the plunge and I thought, let me book the date. I paid my deposit which was a thousand euros and I just I just went in I went last week I turned up on the day to the surgery my surgery was scheduled for one o'clock I met Dr. Mwamba he's very nice he's very friendly and but I went in with a list of questions like a list of questions that I really needed answered and a lot of concerns that I had about what we were going to do and what the plan was and I read them out to him and he answered them one by one he was very thorough in what he said. I was really adamant that I wanted um, to remove the grafts on the corners. So I had some some grafts. I call them garbage grafts. They're just floating in front of my hairline for no reason. So I was really adamant I wanted them removed and used elsewhere. Now, some people might not want to do that because they're scared of getting scarring or, any, or something like that. But I was like, no, nah, I want them removed. Dr. Mwamba agreed. We talked about the hairline. So one thing I'll give Asli Tarjan credit for is that they gave me quite a solid hairline. They gave me a structure for hairline. So me and Dr. Mwamba said, you know what? They gave us the structure. Let's just keep the structure and let's just use it. So we decided to do that, to remove the, the garbage grafts on the corners. And then um, we just talked about the donor restocking and that kind of thing. And it was a really, really thorough evaluation. He looked at my hair under magnification on the proscope. And then he went to shave my head. Then he spent about an hour drawing on the hairline and the temples. Oh, that's another thing. I wanted to redo my temples as well to rebuild them, make them look stronger because my temples have always been a bit slopey. So um, he went, he was drawing that. He looked at my donor zone. He marked out where they were going to extract from, where they were going to put beard grafts in. Really, really thorough. It wasn't like a five minute hair mill job where he draws a hairline on and walks out and then tells the technician to take over. Like this man's a perfectionist. So here are the garbage graphs, yeah? Some there, they're just floating in front of the hairline doing nothing. And then there's some here as well. So I wanted them removed. So Dr. Mwamba, he checked my hair, etc. And you can see in the donor area, you can see the big gaps because there's no density at all. So there's huge gaps there. So this was the plan, basically. So he was going to rebuild the temples. You can see where he's drawn the line there. He's going to add in more hairs from my nape, which is where the really soft hairs are. So the soft hairs in the nape would be used to rebuild the temples. He would remove these graphs here. So you can see those graphs there. He's going to remove them. And then he's just going to really build in and fill in these areas behind. So this is the transition zone. He's going to put in singles on the hairline. Then behind that will be twos and then moving up threes. And he's going to put in the hairs from here and then hairs from my scalp. He's going to put them back into here and on the other corner. So those were the plans. So we really wanted to reinforce the density. And then you can see the same thing on the other side. Garbage graphs over here. You can see that's where he shaved it off. 
temples going to fill in with neat pairs then we're going to really reinforce this area here so all good and then the donor area obviously you can see the border it's really bad on the right side the left side is somewhat better so he's going to put beard hairs back into here and try and make it look a bit better so so the first thing we did anesthesia and then dr mwamba came in and he removed the grass from my hairline um didn't hurt anything like that it was all good and then he got a technician to place them back into this zone here so you can see he's removed them from here and he's actually stitched stitched them up and a lot of people have asked me about that i believe he's done that because there's no hair to actually camouflage those um those punch those punches that he's made those extractions there's no hair to camouflage it so i think he's done the stitches just to ensure that there's no scarring and now that he's taken them off i can't really see any scarring and even if there is minor scarring i don't care um i can get grafts put in there later anyway so it's not a big deal but anyway so he's put um the hairs back into here or a technician has he's obviously made the slits and the technicians put them back into there so i was really happy about that because those grafts really used to bug me because they just used to make the hair hairline so unrefined and it just used to annoy me like why are these hairs here it got to a stage where i was plucking them out with tweezers because i i really just hated the way they looked on my hairline so he put them back in there and i was really happy about that and he also took some more scalp hair from here and then put them into the corner there so any hair that he took out from here they also replaced with beard hair so they just took the beard hair and they put it straight back into this area where they had literally just removed hairs from to put in my scalp so it's quite a convoluted explanation but what he was trying to do was just to ensure that he didn't create another problem by extracting more hairs from this area so a really clever strategy i really i'm really happy with that strategy so the surgery was long it was two days long um first day i came in at 1 p.m finished at 12 30 um so you have Dr. Mwamba, who's obviously does all the important stuff. He does the incisions. He does the delicate work, like the temple work, like the hairline work. But he also, he also has a really strong team around him. And they're all going to work on you at some point in Brussels anyway. So Dr. Ali, who is brilliant. And you, he had another lady doctor. And there, was, there were a couple of technicians. And they were all very professional, all very good. So they all work at you at some point. But Dr. Mwamba is always there always overseeing and he does the real important stuff so um yeah i was really like i was really happy with the first day it wasn't too strenuous it was long but it wasn't too strenuous but the next day was all the real stuff was going to happen so the next day i was i came in at 11 and today we were going to do the temples the hairline and we we're going to do the donor restocking or fit farming so that was an arduous day we <laughs> i got in at 11 got my head washed all good then we started at about 1 p.m i had some light therapy as well then we started at about 1 p.m we finished i kid you not at 6 30 a.m <laughs> 6 30 a.m i walked out of the clinic now that might sound a bit alarming to some but there i think there are a couple of reasons so well one main reason is that they were understaffed the clinic were understaffed the day before because they had two of their team who were not able to get to brussels because of plane problems they uh, were delayed and they were understaffed and also dr mwamba is currently trying to make up for the covid backlog backlog so he was seeing two patients that day so obviously he was still involved in the operations he was still there but things just did take a little bit longer so it was a really draining day i'm not gonna lie to you it was really lucky that i booked an airbnb five minutes around the corner because if it wasn't i would have been screwing um <laughs> taking a taxi back at that time but in fairness everybody was super professional everybody was in good spirits they got the job done like their the work ethic and the professional professionalism was brilliant at one point dr muamba and dr ali i think they were working on me for like six hours straight when they were dr muamba was doing my hairline and the uh, temples i think he was doing the incisions then implanting into them he was working about five six hours straight and dr ali at the same time as that he was extracting beard grafts um but no complaints from none of them everybody they were doing their job 
Dr. Mwamba was, <laughs> he was singing along to Michael Jackson, listening to Congolese music. Dr. Ali was making jokes. They were chatty. Um, yeah, it was. I felt like honestly, it sounds cringy, but I felt like I went on a journey with them. Had some good discussions with Dr. Mwamba as well. Um, he's a nice guy. He's a knowledgeable guy about many different topics. It, it was like really, really good to just chat to him as well during the surgery. But I was out of it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was so tired, um, and I just wanted the day to be done. So it was arduous. But let's have a look at the final work from Dr. Mwamba. So this was this was the end of it. So basically, you can see the zones where he's implanted the the new grafts looks so so clean. And just a footnote: so here it looks a little bit sparse. Doctor Mwamba actually went back after this picture and he put more in because, like I said, the guy's a perfectionist. He did that without me asking or saying anything. He noticed it. He went and put more in here, um, just to solidify it and bolster it a little bit. So it looks so clean. When I compare that to the Ashley Tarjan one at the beginning, let's have a look. <laughs> that looks night and day. Look at that. And then look at the work here by Dr. Mwamba. It looks brilliant. And here's another picture. This is, I think, when I got back to the hotel room. I'm not sure. But again, looks very, very clean. Can't, I can't compliment it enough. Compliment that enough. That's just great work. So then if we look at the temple work, so here you can see the stitches um, where the grass were removed. And one thing I've actually noticed about that is that I probably, that probably will leave a gap there because he obviously once he's put the stitches there, he wasn't able to put hair on top of it. So it might leave a little gap, but it's not, it's nothing major. We'll see how that one pans out. But anyway, look at the temple work, like his angulation, I'm sure is on point. It looks good. And just looking at that now, if that grows out how I want it to, I'm going to be very, I'm going to be pleased with that one. Then if we look at the other side as well, it's looking good. I'm loving it. And then here is the donor work. So he took beard hairs, they put it back into the donor. So this right side is where the real damage occurred. Um, the right side is where there's like an obvious border. When I cut, shave my hair low, you can see the obvious border. So that's where they focus more of their attention. Also, they put grafts into areas where they had removed them. So they taken some out of my scalp and put it into the front of my hair. They put some beard hairs into there. So again, they're trying to close off a problem and not create a new one. They also put some beard grafts into the side here as well, onto the left side. So I'm I'm hoping those will grow out to be really good. Two days after the operation, Dr. Mwamba, he, he did a debrief with me, which was really nice. He showed me under the proscope what they'd done on the back of my head. And some of my beard grafts are twos. So they're not just singles, they're twos. So if they grow in, there it's going to get me hopefully some good coverage and there's plenty more left where that came from as well so god knows in the future maybe i could do more with it but we'll see how it pans out we'll see how it pans out and then this is two days after um the day before the day i went home so he removed the stitches and honestly from where when i look in the mirror now they look really good there doesn't seem to be any scarring or anything like that everything is healing well thank god uh, the scabbing is coming off so they recommend to wash two times a day from the first day so and you're using a saline spray every every like 20 minutes or something like that so i've been doing that scabbing is is um, not bad at all there's still a lot of redness i'm hoping that reduces soon i barely had any swelling as well and when i tell you that the swelling of of turkey i must <laughs> my face grew to probably twice its size it was ridiculous I've had barely any swelling now. And I put that down to good technique from the surgeon. Obviously, it can just be how you react on the day. But the surgeon, if they're professional, they have ways to mitigate that kind of thing. They obviously didn't do that in Asli Tarjan, but he's done it here. So um, so oh, I'll give you a graph breakdown as well. So 1,360 on the scalp and 765 body hair grafts. So that was the final count for everything. So what can I say? Like, I'm I'm just super super happy with the work. Honestly, I'm so happy with Doctor Moore with what he did for me, what his team did for me. Um, I just don't want to get my hopes up, 
And the thing is with hair transplants, even the best surgeons can have off days. Even the best surgeons, even the best footballers can miss penalties, can miss free kicks, can have stinkers. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's out of their control. Sometimes it's in their control. So things can happen. And I don't want to get my expectations up and things don't happen. But if I can even get 50 to 75% improvement on my starting situation, I'll be very happy. But I'm quietly confident it's going to be much better than that. I can't fault the work ethic of the surgeon or the plan of the surgeon is all top, top, top notch. Mwamba, I, I believe he's world class at what he does. Um, everything so far, thank God, is going really smoothly. Alhamdulillah. So, um, so yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased to see what will happen. Um, I hope this will encourage some other people to go and seek out Dr. Mwamba. I brought up his site here. Um, so he operates in three places. He operates out of New Jersey, At Atlanta and Brussels, obviously. He splits his time between them. And um, he's got all his price in here. You can see all the price in. So he does donor repair, beard hair grafts, body hair grafts. Um, yeah, just an all around brilliant surgeon. Check him out. And that's it from me. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope this review will help some of you somehow. If you've got any stories about botch jobs or even the comeback as well, please let me know as well. I still want to talk about that kind of stuff to bring awareness to people. If it saves one person from botching their head, then for me, that's worth it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any questions, please message me. Please email me on avoidthisclinic at gmail.com. And anyway, thanks a lot for listening and I'll catch you on the next one.